Hey everybody, Troy here. Just want to give you an update on how the prison tours went. It's been a week uh, since I went on the trip with the River Church in Michigan. And uh, we went to two level three facilities in Ohio. One was Warren Correctional Facility and the other was right across the street. It's called Lebanon Correctional Facility. And uh, you know, all in all, I think we probably saw, I mean, close to six, 700 prisoners, uh, inmates, and um, did these programs with them. And I kind of want to explain to you kind of how, how the first day went. And then it's just an incredible experience the way this all worked out. And uh, so day one, we got there uh, Thursday evening at about eight, nine o'clock. It was a five hour drive from where I live in Michigan. And, um, got there about uh, eight, nine o'clock Thursday, pretty much hit the sack right away because we had to be up at 4 a.m. on Friday morning, uh, eat breakfast real quick in the lobby, had a quick meeting uh, to kind of get people directed in the right uh, in the right direction. And then we went right to Warren Correctional. We get there and it's it's dark, you know, it's 5 a.m. basically once we get there. And, you know, in the parking lot, having never done this before, my adrenaline is like pumping because we're outside of a prison. We have like, I don't know, 20 Harley Davidson motorcycles. Most of them are Harleys. Just, they're, they're getting started up, they're revving up, getting the engines warmed up, so it's just rumbling. You have guys running around. Hey, did you get the books? Hey, who's driving this bike? Who's driving this bike? Bam, you gotta go first. We gotta get processed in and da 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 da, -da. So like, you know, temperatures are rising and uh, the gang was keeping it together, you know, but the, the, the guys that are kind of in charge of this thing are directing traffic and, you know, it was, it was a pretty uh, intense moment there the first uh i guess maybe half hour 45 minutes so then we uh we get to the front of the prison and they're like hey you got to go to the sally port to check in and sally port's like just imagine a humongous gate opens up you drive your trailer and your uh with your van and your trailer and all the bikes follow you and it's like this big area with the gate on the other side where you kind of just sit and they check in the gear and it's raining at this time too they check in the gear look at the bikes and make sure we're not bringing anything inappropriate in the prison. So we get there and then they're like, oh wait, hey, you're supposed to go back and check in the front individually and then come back to Sally Port and we'll check everything in. So that process put us back um, from a time standpoint. We had to get our first program started at 7.15. Uh, to make a long story short on that part, God worked and got us in that prison fast, checked in fast. Were we able to get through the courtyard of the prison, so through Sally Port, through the courtyard, and then to the actual prison yard where it's like, okay, now it's loadout time. You drop the hatch to the trailer. It's like 40, 50 guys just grab all the gear. They get a stage set up. They get banners set up. All the bikes riding through the, the, the courtyard into the prison yard. They get parked up, kind of staged so the prisoners can see them. You know, getting cables all wired up, PA system. PA systems, four mains, four subs. So we're not talking like a little, you know, fender passport system. This is a, a PA system that we get set up, um, you know, stage, drum riser, the whole shebang. Um, so once we get that set up, kind of fast forward a little bit, we served, um, I think, four groups that first day. And a couple of them were very low number groups, like 20 or 30 guys at a time, either because they're bad dudes, you know, like the, these are, these are the, the, the dangerous guys um, from the way I understand it. And then we had some uh, mentally impaired inmates as well that we did a small group for. And then after that, we did like two groups that were like two, three hundred apiece. And that's kind of like if you picture a movie with all the guys in the prison yard, that's kind of how it was. But the way this works, so if we can kind of fast forward to the, the big group of guys, say two, three hundred at a time. Uh, imagine a, uh, you're walking in the prison yard. So there's a gate that opens up, you know, fits a couple guys wide, basically. And we're set up as a band facing this direction with a wall behind us. And then, there, you know, we have our banners and um, we have the, the stage and uh, the trailer is set up. It says prison team on it. The trailer is set up there. Nice backdrop. And then to my left would be where the guys walk in, maybe about 20 feet that way. And they're walking in this direction. We'd have like 40 um, volunteers, the hogs in ministry. 40 volunteers like lined up single file and their job basically was every, for every prisoner, every inmate that walks in, they're shaking their hand and saying, Hey, we're happy to be here with you today. Um, and while, while that's happening, we're playing a heavy rock and roll song like crazy train or enter Sandman or, 
you know, some one of the songs on her set list to like amp these guys up and let them know like, hey, today is different than any other day that you've been here. And uh, so they're all smiling, the prisoners, and uh, the inmates are just pretty jacked, you know, at that time to be there. And uh, they're wondering what the heck's going on. First of all, I think it's rock and roll band and all these bikers and stuff. And so the way that it ends up working out, um, the way the program works is we play like five or six songs. You know, we're getting we're getting the inmates kind of fired up and, you know, telling them a little bit why we're there. Just a sneak peek, you know, playing guitar solos behind our head and just cutting up, having a good time with them as they're walking around looking at the bikes and stuff like that. And then for after the five or six songs, they bring in a, a, a comedian slash magician. And this guy is just great, like the perfect adult comedian, not too dirty, but he's kind of picking on the inmates and getting them involved and engaging with them and uh, making them laugh. I mean, they're just just cracking up, you know, and uh, probably for the first time in a long time, feeling a lot of joy at this point in time. And from there, Pastor Jim Combs, who is the, the lead pastor uh, of the River Church. He's the founding pastor of that church. Uh, his, the campus he pastors primarily, is in Holly, Michigan. And he comes up and he basically, in a nutshell, says to the guys, hey, you know, I guess you're probably wondering why we're here today. And um, Picture Pastor Jim, you can look him up. Got a big old beard, burly beard, kind of slick back hair, curls in the back, you know, and he's wearing like a cutoff button up denim shirt, but it's white. Uh, with like, you know, frizzies, just like, kind of looks like a prisoner, to be honest with you. And uh, this is a man of God we're talking about here. I mean, he just loves Jesus Christ. And uh, so what he ends up telling these guys, he picks he picks a guy out of the out of the inmate crowd and says, hey, you know, did you play high school football? Uh, you know, they raise their hand. Yeah, hey, hey, buddy, come help me out. You're going to be God. And he's like, that's stretching it, but you're going to be God. And he puts him on the other side and throws the football to him. And he starts telling the prisoners, hey, the reason why I'm here today is you know, I feel like I owe you one. I feel like this is where I should be. You know, my mom had me when I was 15. My dad was a, an addict. My grandfather served a life term in prison for murder. And uh, I didn't grow up on the right side of the tracks if you catch my drift. And um, the only thing I feel like that separates you from I or you from me is that one day I threw my life to God. And he, he's got the football. He throws the football to the inmate who's God. And he says, I threw my life to God. And he threw it back to me, and it made so now they're playing catch at this point. He threw it back to me. He threw it back to me better. And he continues on. You know, he, um, I just kept throwing my life to God, and every time I'd encounter a problem, I'd, I'd throw my problem to God. I'd throw my suffering to God, I'd throw my hurt to God, I'd throw my victories to God, and he'd throw everything back better to me. And you know, one day he threw me a wife, and he's looking at the football. He threw me a wife. I don't know what to do with this thing. And uh, of course, the inmates just love that. But he says, you know, I, I wasn't trying to be a husband, how to be a father. Um, he threw me a church. I didn't know how to be a pastor, so I threw the church back to God, and I gave it to him. I, I surrendered it to him. He threw it back to me better. And that's the whole theme of this thing. And and by the end of the talk, he had written a book um, for some like addiction recovery group he leads on Tuesday. He had written a book for these folks to help them through their addiction and, and to help them walk through those steps and to get clean and give their life over to Christ. And so he opens this book, and he's like, I, I brought you this book. I, you know, You have nothing that I want. I brought you this book. And then the inside, it's dedicated to somebody. And on the inside, it's dedicated. It says, dedicated to the inmates of the Ohio State prison system. And by this point, these guys are really like, wow, this guy's real. You know, and, uh, and Pastor Jim says, you know, I, I love you guys. You know, it sounds weird. You don't know me, but I love you and care for you. And I, I want to teach you, uh, you know, how to throw your life to God. And, and so he says, he kind of says, look around. We see all these guys. We're all wearing gray shirts. He says, you know, hey, these guys are in gray shirts around here. And if you have questions, if you want a book, Go see him. They'll give you a book. If you have questions about how to throw your life to God, they'll answer those questions for you. And they'll pray with you. You know, he, he says, oh, hey, Pastor, I, I don't need no prayer. And he says, hey, everybody needs some prayer, man. You got kids at home. You got a court date coming up. You got something that we can pray with you about. Let us do that for you. And, uh, you know, what? when I had left for this thing, I had envisioned that we'd go there. We'd play a couple rock and roll tunes. And then the prisoners, the inmates would scatter and I'd be chasing people down, trying to talk to them about Christ, beat them over the head with the Bible, trying to talk to them about Christ. And uh, it was just not that way at all. Um, once Pastor Jim is done, the, of course, there's 50, 60 guys that want nothing to do with what you're saying. But the other couple hundred, these guys are, they're flocking to you to get a book. They're flocking to you to receive prayer, to be prayed over, to be, uh, just hear about the hope that we brought in Jesus. And um, I shared some really special moments with these inmates, you know, just, uh, you know, just hands on their head, on their shoulders, just 
we're a sweaty mess. It's a hundred degrees outside and we're wearing, you know, jeans, been on asphalt all day. Um, just, you know, praying that they would understand that they don't have to come clean to be received by Jesus. That, that Romans 5, 8 says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That on John three seventeen that Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it from condemnation. We're teaching these guys about the gospel and they have kids at home that have been injured. They have kids at home that are in messed up situations. They have wives at home that don't have a leader in their household anymore. Some of these guys have been here 20 years. I uh, have 15 more to go. Some guys are getting out next month and they're just, we're teaching them, man, you got to do something different because what you were doing before ain't working. And when you live outside, outside God's design, things don't go very well. But when you learn how to live in his design and live in the grace and the mercy that Christ has given you, things go well. Um, they don't go perfect, but when you stumble, Jesus is there to pick you up. And, um, it was pretty emotional. It was life changing experience for me and I cannot wait to go back. I cannot wait to go back. So next year I'm going to do a couple of these things instead of just one. Um, if I can get away with more, I'll get away with more, but, uh, it was just absolutely incredible. And one of the special stories that I have is, uh, I was praying with a gentleman named Richard and this guy, like you. And the flesh in me says, you see this guy walking down the street and you're kind of scared. <laughs> He's a bad dude, but what a sweetheart of a man. I got to pray with him and I'm praying with him and his buddy walks up. His buddy, his name's Mike. And um, uh, a friend of mine, Jeff, and I are praying with these two guys and just talking to him, getting to know him, loving on him. And um, the inmate says, uh, hey man, you want an inmate official hat? And I told this in the last vlog. It was so cool. I, mean, I was like, uh, hey man, only if you trade me. I had bought a brand new snapback trucker cap for the trip and I traded this guy hats and I get to wear his inmate hat the rest of the trip. And, oh man, it's so special to do that, to, to just love on this guy and love on these people that just, they don't have any hope. And, uh, that's ministry. That's living for Christ and taking the love of Christ into the lion's den and watching God just protect you and give you the words to say to these guys, to give them hope and, I don't even share the gospel like that at home. I share it in my household, but back in my hometown, I mean, I have, I never had that kind of courage in my life. And I love Jesus and I love talking about Jesus, but I've never talked about him like that to a perfect stranger. And I, I know going forward that I, that God will give you the boldness and the courage to do that. And we need to do that as Christians. There's hope in Christ that doesn't matter what you're like when you meet Jesus, he accepts you and he changes you from the inside out and transforms your life. And if you're a Christian, you know that to be true. Um, so then the second day, the second day was much the same. Uh, the first day we did four programs like that, music, comedian, magician, talk, and then prayer with the guys and did four programs like that lasted all day basically. And then the next day we went to uh, the Lebanon facility, and uh, we had a mix up with some scheduling. So there's another guy there ministering to the, to the inmates. So we actually went to the camp, which is, these are guys that are like on good behavior. Uh, maybe they only have a few months longer to go uh, before they're out or a few years sometimes too, but they're, they're, they're the good guys in prison. You know, uh, we had a chance to go in there and play some songs for them. And uh, actually uh, part of the team played softball with them. And it was a good game. Like these inmates could play some ball and we got a chance to watch them. And we're heckling the inmates and stuff and just like hanging out with them, you know, and there's, there's no, to me, there's no apprehension. There was no fear. Just these are guys that made some bad choices and we're there to tell them that there's still hope for their lives. Even if they stay in prison the rest of their days, they can spread the gospel while they're there and just give mercy to people. And, uh, so we lost the game. We lost five to four. We were up like four nothing at one point in time. And they came back and they're rallying. They're like on the sidelines. Think positive guys. Come on, we can do this. And watching them come together with the camaraderie there. And, um, so then we finished the game, play a couple more songs and, um, bring the guys around for the, for the comedy thing, the magician thing and the talk and pray with those guys too. And have just as powerful moments with those, that group of guys. And then we served in root beer floats, all a couple hundred of them. Uh, serving root beer floats and I uh, got a chance to love on some more and then packed up and off we go and uh, you know this this church this river church is special uh, I don't go there I'm not a member of that church but they're just they're getting after it they're doing ministry they're, they're bringing Jesus into the lion's den and um, we have 23 prisons scheduled this summer so it's not like hey we're gonna do this once and then a couple of years we'll do it again no, no every single weekend they're going to prisons in Ohio and they're making this happen. It's a big production and they bring a big team of people and it's 
for the inmates to teach them that they're loved and that there's hope. And I just thank the Lord that my buddy Jeff just found it in his heart to reach out to me and, and say, hey, I want you to come with me to do this, man. I think you'd love it. And I think that you'll find that God moves and you'll be amazed. And it'll be a special moment and it'll change your life. And I'll tell you what, he was absolutely right. And I can't wait to go back and spread the love of Jesus Christ all over the prisons in Ohio. And hopefully one day God opens the door for prisons in Michigan and Indiana and other places that we can go to and do the same thing. So I just want to tell you guys, if you have, a, if you have the opportunity to do this, um, don't pass it up. God will protect you. God will give you boldness and it will change your life. It'll take you out of your comfort zone of going in every Sunday and playing your worship music. And that is amazing. You guys know uh, that me, as, as much as anybody, loves to worship on Sunday morning and play um, and just sing my heart out to Jesus. There's a place for that and it needs to happen. But there's also a place for going in and boldly sharing the gospel to people that have no hope. And directly, you only have a few minutes with these guys to get in there and tell them. Get to the point. And it'll change your life. It'll change your life if you find an opportunity like this and do it. So even if you're close to me in Michigan, I live in Grand Blanc. Um, you can look up the zip code there. But if you're close to me, even if you're close to Warren, Ohio, um, those areas where the prisons are, and you see me posting about upcoming prison trips that I'm going on, reach out to me, and I'll reach out to this church and see if we can get you hooked up and plugged in on one of these trips. Even if you go as just a body that's there to share the gospel. That's the experience. The music part's fun, but the experience part, the part that resonates with your transformed heart is sharing the gospel with people. And I want to give you that chance. And I'm sure they'll welcome anyone that wants to come along and we can get uh, background checks and stuff on. There's a process you have to go through, but it's well worth it. So uh, guys, I'm sorry for the long thing, but I want to make sure I didn't uh, spare any detail. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to tell you all about it. Whatever you want to know, details, um, I'm happy to inform you and kind of educate you as to how this works and, and how you can get involved and what it was like. And, you know, if you want to email me directly to that's cool. You can get my email address on the website. Uh, otherwise leave comments below. So, all right, guys, that's the update on the prison trips, 2017. Love you guys. We'll talk to you next time.